Well, hello, and here we are, another day. I missed last week. Um, I was away, but I'm so thankful to be back and to be able to teach the word of God. So we are going to start at Jeremiah chapter 28. Now, before we start, I just need to uh, let you know, this is pretty long. It's a pretty long um, lesson. But if you listen carefully, I know that you will glean so much from it. You see, in this day and age, you hear so many people prophesying about what is to come. And because of what we have gone through the past two years with the pandemic, people are searching, they're looking for some kind of a word, whether it be in the horoscopes, um, people telling others, well, this is what the Lord said, that you're going to be rich next week, or, or God's going to bring you a husband within the next two years. People want to hear what they want to hear, and people give you, sometimes the false prophets, what you want to hear. But if you really want the truth, it is located in the word of God, and the Holy Spirit will give you everything that you need, every answer that you are searching for. Now, it's a process. Again, I always say it's a process. It will take some time. God is not a genie that you just take out of the bottle and your wish is his command. He doesn't work like that. But his word works if you work it. His word works if you follow what he is instructed in his words through his prophets, through his messengers, through his disciples. But make no mistake, there are, and the Bible speaks of it, in the last days, there will be false prophets, people telling you what you want to hear, tickling your ear. But the bottom line is, is that we pay no attention, those who understand and know the word of God and who trust only in God, because that's who you're supposed to be trusting. It says, put your no trust in man, put your trust wholly in God and his word, and you cannot go wrong. But you will be fooled if you take some other person's word over the word of God. And if he or she is not giving you the true word of God, then they are false prophets and you must, must come from among them. Whether it be in your church, whether it be your friends, your pastor, whoever else, if they're not giving you the true word of God, come from among them. Because the Bible says to be separated. You cannot have any dealings with them. So again, this is not a caution, but it is a warning. And the warning is, be careful who speaks into your life. Be careful that you don't listen to any and every voice that comes into your ear gates. You don't look at or desire what other people have. You stay focused on God and God alone. Our Father in heaven knows everything. Jesus died on the cross so that we may have an abundant life. An abundant life is a life full of the word of God, which will get you to your destination. What's the ultimate destination? It is not, this is not our home. Earth is not our home. Heaven, those who believe in God, those who have been saved, those who understand that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. They understand that the Holy Spirit guides them into all truth. They understand that the Father God is above all. So it's three, Father God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when we settle that in our minds and our hearts and know that that's who we trust and no one else, I'm telling you, you won't be bamboozled. You won't be fooled because the true word of God, this is your roadmap through life. So I had to preference that because 
like I said, people are just looking for answers and they're looking for answers in any and every place, but mostly in the wrong places. Place your trust in the word of God, not in man, not in your riches, not in your family, your wife, your husband. Trust only in the word of God and you will not go wrong. So we're gonna talk about the false prophets. Now, Jeremiah, we already know, was a true prophet of God. There were several, and when we read our Bibles, because the Bible says to show, study to show thyself approved. So when you study, you will understand that there were several prophets that were true prophets of God, that God truly spoke to them. And then through them, they gave the word to the people. But then there were also false prophets as they are now in this day and age. So I'm gonna find out there are two prophets in this story. So we're gonna to try to, we're gonna find out which one is the true prophet and which one is the false prophet. And guess what? See, God is not playing. You cannot play with his people and think that you're going to get away with it. So if you give a word to someone, out of your agendas, out of selfish motives, and they believe you, then you might as well, just like the Bible says, put a millstone around your neck because it would be better than, than you messing with one of his children, that you given the false word. And people are hungry for what is truth to better their lives and what better medicine to give them but the word of god okay so let's begin this is going to be a good one like i said it's a little long but bear with me please jeremiah it says the false prophet hananiah okay so we already know there's jeremiah and there's hananiah and we already know the beginning of the story if you read your bible but i'm not going to give it away those who don't even know the story. We're gonna go line upon line, precept upon precept, because that's how we learn the words of God. So line upon line, chapter 28. It says, in the same year as the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and the fifth month, Hananiah, the son of Azor, the prophet who was from Gibeon. Okay, this is, they're given, they're given the history, okay? And that's what we should learn. We should want to learn step by step what happened, okay? Then it says, he spoke to me in the house of the Lord in the presence of the priest. Now here's who was present. They're telling who's present. Jeremiah's telling who's present. In the presence of the priest and of all the people saying, now there were priests just like any church now. There's the priests, the deacons, the preachers, the um deaconess, and then they're the people, the congregation. So if we visualize it, then visualize that back in the day. Then it says, saying, now this is what Hananiah, the son of the, of the prophet, who said from Gideon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord. Now listen to this. This person, this prophet is in the church. We have false prophets in the church even today. It's no different. There's nothing new under the sun, okay? So it says, thus said the Lord, the host, the God of Israel. He's, okay, really? It's telling it. He says, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Now, this is what Hananiah is telling the priests and the people, okay? Within two years, this is he prophesizing. Within two years, I will bring back unto the, this place all the vessels of the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar, so if you read your Bible, go back, Nebuchadnezzar, he came in and he took everything, okay? He said, but he said, the Lord told him that Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. So like I said, he took everything from them and carried it back to his own country. Then he says, and I, listen to this, and I will bring back to this place, Jekana, the son of Jeroboam, 
king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah who went into Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Now listen to this. God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in and take everything. See, there's nothing that has done, that has been done and being done and will be done that God is not aware of. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows before it even happens. So he allowed this. And my aunt used to say, my aunt Marilyn used to always say, we must accept what God allows. And I understand that fully. Because whatever he allows, it ultimately will be those who trust in him will be for our good. Whether it's a punishment, it's a chastisement, eventually it will turn out for our good. So this is what this man is prophesying. And he's saying that the Lord told him that Nebuchadnezzar, he's, that the Lord is gonna take the yokes away from the people and bring every single thing that Nebuchadnezzar took from them and bring it back. Okay, now listen carefully, okay? Verse five, then the prophet Jeremiah, and this is the true prophet, said to the prophet Hananiah, in the, listen, in, in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. So, first of all, Hananiah stood up in front of the priests and the whole congregation, and he prophesied. Then it says, Jeremiah said to the prophet, okay, stood in the house of the Lord. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, what? Amen. Now, Jeremiah is a true prophet. Hananiah prophesied about King Nebuchadnezzar bringing all of the things back. Now, Jeremiah said amen. Amen means I agree. It's concluded. It's done. Now listen carefully. Because Jeremiah is thinking that Hananiah is a true prophet, that what he said is true. You said the Lord said it? Okay, but this is what we do. This is how we can decipher what is true and what is not when it comes to pass. That's the bottom line. When it comes to pass, that's when you will know it's a true prophet. Jeremiah says it's in his word, okay? So then he says, this is good. Like I said, just, just follow along, follow along. And then I want you to read it for yourself because you will glean so much from it. You'll get so much from it. And then you won't be relying on other people. You will be hearing the voice of God through the Holy Spirit, who will guide you into every truth, every decision-making that you need to make, every thing that you need, the Holy Spirit will give it to you. It may come in the form of another person, but the, the Bible says to try the spirit by the spirit to see if it is true. Okay, so let's go on. So then it says, so who Jeremiah said, amen. May the Lord do so. This is what Jeremiah said. May the Lord do so. May the Lord perform your words, Hananiah, which you have prophesied. Listen to, listen to Jeremiah. So he does, I don't even think that he realized because when you keep reading, he doesn't even realize what he's saying until the Lord speaks to him. But he says to Hananiah, he says, look, May the Lord do so, and may the Lord perform your words, okay? Were they really his words, or were they really God's words? But Jeremiah says, may the Lord perform your words with you, you, Hananiah, have prophesied to bring back the vessels of the house of the Lord and all that was carried away captive from Babylon unto this place. You said you, that the Lord said that they're, they're coming back? Okay. And he says, nevertheless, hear now this word that I speak, Jeremiah is saying, in your ears and in the ears of all the people in this congregation. So now Jeremiah gets to speak. 
verse eight. He says, the prophets of old who have been before me and before you prophesied both against many countries and against many kingdoms of war, disaster, and pestilence. They all did this. They all prophesied. Okay. Then he says, as for the prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet comes to pass, listen to this, then that prophet shall be known as one whom the Lord has truly sent. That's when you'll know. When that prophecy will come to pass. Okay, now listen to this. Verse 10 says, then Hananiah, the prophet took the yoke. Listen to this now. Look what he's, what he's going to do to Jeremiah. Took the yoke from off, off of the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. Arrogant. Broke it. Hmm. Hananiah spoke in the presence of the people and all congregation after Jeremiah has said what he said. Here comes Hananiah. See, it's, it's, if you're a true prophet, you don't have to prove yourself. You just give the word of God and keep moving. Whether they believe it or not, it is up to them. But if it comes to pass, then they'll know that was a true man of God. That was a true woman of God. They told me the truth because it came to pass. Try the spirit by the spirit. Okay, listen to this. So here he comes trying to one up Jeremiah. Says then, verse 10, then Hananiah, the prophet took the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. Hananiah spoke in the presence of the people saying, thus said the Lord, here we go again. That's what he's saying. Y'all, y'all better stop prophet lying. Unless the Lord says it, please don't play with that because you will lose your life. This is a warning to many out there. Listen to the word of God, because if you keep playing with people and you keep telling them what thus said the Lord and the Lord didn't even tell you that, look what's going to happen to you as well, because God has no respect to person. Let's read on. Then he says, thus said the Lord, even so I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the necks of all the nation within the space of look, two years. He even gives a date, two years. Then the prophet went away. Jeremiah went away, went his way. He's like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to argue with you. He's, I'm leaving. And, he, and the Bible says, he went away. Jeremiah just walked away. Now look at this. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Then he says, okay, does it all for this said the Lord. Mm. Y'all, okay, I just have to stop. When the word of God comes forth and you don't understand but you are so desperate to look for something that will ease your situation, please, I beg of you, turn to the word of God. That's, that's just your, your, your compass, your GPS, your medicine. Everything you need is here. I have to stop and say that because so many times we're relying on people to give us our answers. We rely on uh, friends and family. Well, what do you think? What, well, well I'm, I'm making this decision. Well, what does God say? Did you turn to God? Did you go to him first? It says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be falling into place for your life. So did you seek God first in your situation? Have you so sought God in your sickness? Why you're sick? Have you sought God in your situation with your family, your, your loved ones, your wife, your husband, you're arguing all the time. Why? Do you run to your girlfriend? Girl, I'm having such a hard time with my relationship. My child is, a, okay. We have friends that we can talk to. That's what friends are for. Thank God for friends. But I thank God for God because he is my true friend.
He won't lie to me. He won't sugarcoat things for me. He will tell me the truth and lead me into all truth through the Holy Spirit. That's what we need. We don't need people coddling us and, and sugarcoating and telling us, oh, girl, it's going to be all right. Man, you know, it, 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 you're going to do fine. You, you know what? Just do this. Do this. Never seeking God's advice. Only your friend's advice. And then when it turns out wrong, you blame them. But you know what? You should blame yourself. Because you turn to a human rather than the creator who created that human. How crazy is that? Okay. Okay. All right, Lord. Help me. All right. So verse, we're going to verse 12. I mean, it's funny because I used to do that. And that's why I can make fun of it. That's why I can laugh. I can laugh at myself because I used to do that. I used to turn to my friends. You, look, okay. And in, in, I'm, I'm telling myself, I'm telling on myself. Yeah. Even in uh, elementary school, I remember we're going on a field trip, just getting off course. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I put my trust in four leaf clovers. I bought a souvenir. We went on this trip. I don't know where we went to, but we went into a souvenir shop and I was so desperate to seek things that I'm, what's going on, Lord? I'm, uh, I'm not doing well in school. I'm, I'm not uh, popular with the people, with the, with the other girls. And what's going on? Okay. Well, let me get this four leaf clover. Let me see if this will bring me luck. Mm. Lord, please forgive me. I still repent because we look for the answers in other things and they can never give us the true answers like our God can give us. Just remember that. Mm. Okay, so verse 12, then it says, and the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet after Hananiah the prophet had broken the, the yoke from his neck. Jeremiah saying, Mm -mm -mm. go and tell now this this let me let me go back verse 12 because i'm gonna have to read this again then the word of the lord listen to this now god is speaking to came to jeremiah the prophet after hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke off of his neck and god said to this time, Jeremiah, now remember, he's going on his way and he's stopped. God stops him. He arrests him and says, look, Jeremiah, this is the true word. You hear my voice. I don't know whose voice Hannah, Hannah and I heard, but I'm speaking to you now. I'm telling you. See, my sheep know my voice. That's what the word of God says. That's what Jesus said. My sheep know my voice. So he arrested Jeremiah in his tracks. Stop. Before you go any further, let me tell you what is true. Mm -mm -mm. He says, verse 13, go and tell Hananiah saying, thus said the Lord. Oh, so who's, who's hearing truly from God now? Hananiah or Jeremiah? Let's find out. Because this is so exciting. The, the word of God is like a movie. It, it is so exciting. You can't wait until the next thing comes. If you really get into the word of God, it is so exciting. So let's go on. Okay. He says, thus said the Lord, you have broken the yoke of wood, which was on Jeremiah's neck, but you have made instead them yokes of iron. You made it even worse for these people. You lied to them. And now you made it worse. Then he says, for verse 14, for thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, look, Jeremiah is telling, I'm going to let you know who I am getting my message from. I'm breaking it down. The God that I'm talking, that's talking through me, that I'm talking to you about, who told me to come and tell you, guess who he is? He's the God of Israel. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the almighty. Don't get it twisted. Make no mistake. The one who has sent me to tell you truth, he made you. He's the maker of heaven and earth. He is the one and only true God. 
That's what Jeremiah's telling the people. Look, don't get it twisted. I don't know who he's talking about. Han Hananiah, I don't know who God you talking about, but the God that I serve, the God who sent me to go come back and tell his people what truly is the truth, I'm gonna tell you, that's who he is. I'm breaking it down for you. So you won't mistake which God is which. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's how we should be. We should be so bold like that. Okay, I'm gonna tell you who my God is. Now, I don't know who you serve, but the God I serve, oh yeah, yeah, he made me. He made heaven and earth. He made you. Can you say that about your God? Who created you? So you have to be bold sometimes with people to let them know the God that I serve, I'm gonna tell you about him. I'm gonna tell you who he is. I'm gonna tell you he died for me. He bled for me. He loved me so much that he sent his only son to die for me. You gotta get it to that point in your life. And I'm gonna tell you, it does take boldness. But I'm gonna tell you, when you know that God is on your side, you can be bold like that. You can speak like that and be bold about it and have no reservations. Okay, so let's go on. So then it says, okay, uh, verse 14, thus said the Lord, the host, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, he says, I put a joke of iron on the necks of all all these nations that they may serve who? Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He said, I did that. I did that. And they shall serve him. It's not a might. You're not going to do anything. You don't have the power to do it. I set that up for a reason. Because you all were so rebellious that I had to send somebody in to break your pride down. And he said, and I'm not taking it back. I did that. And you are not going to change things, Hananiah. And you are not going to change things, whoever I'm speaking to. If God set it up that you have done whatever you've done, and now you're paying the consequences, he's not going to change that. You decided to do what you wanted to do. You big and bad enough to do it. I've been there, done that. But as a result, there will be consequences. Same thing. That's why it's just best not to do it. We know right from wrong. We just choose sometimes to go the wrong way, thinking that God will turn a blind eye. And then we do what we want to do and then say, okay, God, you look again. I'm good with you. No. No. He sees everything, he knows everything, and you will never get away with it. Never. Okay, let's go on. Verse 15. We're almost through. This is a good part right here. He said, oh, no, no, no. Let me go back. Then he says, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. That's, that's not an option. They will serve him. And he says, I have given him of the beast of the field also. So he has everything. He does everything. And I allowed it. That's what God's saying through Jeremiah to give to not only Hananiah, who was a lion prophet, but to all his people. Now listen to this. Verse 15. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah, the prophet, listen now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you. He telling them in front of all the people. He's embarrassing them now. He said, the Lord didn't send you and you make these people trust a lie. So now you're, what is it? You're prophet lying. And therefore, thus said the Lord, the true mighty one and only God, speaking through Jeremiah, the true prophet. He says, I am about to cast you from off the face of the earth. Y'all, uh, we can stop right now. That right there is so scary. Can you imagine this true prophet now is telling the false prophet, this is what's going to happen to you. Can you imagine his heart at that very second? Because he knows that Jeremiah is the true prophet now. Hanukkah knows that. 
Hananiah knows that. And so he's saying, oh, can you imagine your heart dropping because you hear a word like that from a prophet who you know is a true prophet. And the God told him, this is what's going to happen to you because of what you have done. Ooh. And you know what? God is not a God that will lie, nor the son of man that he will repent. His word will come to pass. Oh, his word will come to pass. Listen to that. His words shall, must, will come to pass. Make no mistake about that. Then he says, this year, okay, remember Hananiah said in two years, Nebuchadnezzar is going to bring, the, bring those things back. Okay. The true prophet Jeremiah is telling Hananiah, okay, you said two years, you gave a date. I'm going to give you a date. <laughs> I'm going to give you a date that thus, this time you shall die because you, now listen, Lord, this is so good. One more time. This year, we're not talking about next year. We're not talking about two years like you said, Hananiah, what Nebuchadnezzar is going to do when you're going to take those back from Nebuchadnezzar. He says, this year, not five years from now, not two years from now. He says, this year, woo, you shall die. It's not even a, you might die. Perhaps you'll die. Jeremiah makes it very clear to Hananiah, this year, you shall die. According to thus said the Lord, who I'm only the messenger giving you the message, the true message, you false prophet. Mm. Because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. The Lord set this up. Now you're going to try to turn things around and tell the people that the Lord is going to change his mind and do this and that and the other. You're a lie. And because you're a liar, there will be dire consequences because you lied on God. That's the worst kind of lie. Okay. I'm just, uh, mm, 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 mm. I'm just getting really excited about this because I'm going to tell y'all that's what's happening now. Y'all lying on God. And he said, okay. Now he's a merciful God. He said, okay, let, let, me, let, me, let, me just, let me just give you a little bit of time. You better repent. You better get that right. You better go back and tell those people that's not what's true. You know, I, I've, I've known it. I lied. Okay, look, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now. I promise you that what I said, God didn't tell me that. What, what I read, what I've been teaching you, I was teaching you wrong and I knew it. Let's say, go back to the tithes. I knew it. Some of you preachers out there, you teachers, y'all know about the tithes, you know it, but yet you, ch you choose not to give the right word of God. And he's, thank you. Yeah, this is it. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Let me tell you something. When you don't give the right word of God to his people, and I'm talking to somebody, you will pay the price. There will be dire consequences. This is no, I don't even believe in consequences. This is what the word of God is saying. This is what he gave me today to give to his people. I'm just the messenger reading his word line upon line. These are not Lynette's words. This is the word of God. And this is a warning to many out there. You better pay attention. You better get it right with God and stop lying to his people. Tell the truth, even if it means embarrassment to you. I'd rather be out with man and embarrassed with man than God any day. Because see, God can turn that thing around. If you're embarrassed with what you've done or, or what you've taught or what you've said to his people, God can turn that thing around and say, bravo, bravo, my son, bravo, my daughter. 
You chose, because it's a choice, to tell the truth. You chose to perhaps make a fool out of yourself in order to get it right with me. Son, daughter, I promise you, because of your obedience, because of your repentance, oh, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to set you on high because you chose to do the right thing instead of keep going in the wrong direction. And not only you going in the wrong direction, but you're leading the people, my people, that I trusted you with, with my words, to tell the truth, the true word. Because of that, I will honor you. But if you don't, hear me well, you will pay the price. Hananiah is just one of many who chose to be rebellious and to puff himself up instead of giving the true word of God. And look what happened. Don't think it won't happen to you. God is not a God or a man that will lie. His word is true and he has no respect to persons. So if you are another Hananiah, get it right today. Because tomorrow, or he says this year, he didn't say next year, Hananiah. It may be the same for you. It may be tomorrow. It may be the next minute. Mm. So, verse 17, the last verse. So Hananiah, the prophet, died the same year in the seventh month. This word is for someone. Get it right. Repent today. If you backslid, and if, even if you are saved, but you know that you have not done what the Lord has told you to do, that you have not given the true word of God, repent today. Get it right with his people. Get it right with God first. Go to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I wanna open the, the invitation to everybody. This is an invitation of salvation. But most of all, this message is for someone or many who have chosen not to give the true word of God, but are telling people a lie. And because of that, you will pay the price unless you repent, turn from your wicked ways, give your life to Christ completely. Lord, whatever you say, I say. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. My will is not my will, it is your will. And whatever your will is, that's what my will will be. See, that's where you have to get to that point because his will trumps your will any day. And don't think that you're gonna override his will because he will take you out. I'm talking to somebody. Lord, this was a good lesson. But it's a hard lesson. And I know some people are pricked who hear this message. They're pricked in their hearts because they know that they have done wrong. But it's never too late to get it right with God. He's giving you an opportunity today through this message. Repent today. Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I've done wrong. Clean me up. Create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within me. Not my own spirit, not my own way, not the, the, the spirit of, of the devil, the spirit of evil, because it's evil when you give a word to God's people and it is not true. That's a lie. Woo! This is heavy. But hey, either bear the burden have that burden lifted off of you by doing the right thing, giving the truth, repenting to God, and then starting over. If you have to, start over. But I'd rather start over and tell those people the truth than to keep telling them a lie. 
and you pay the price. That's all there is today, nothing else. Thank you, Lord. You have been wonderful. This is a great word. Read it again. Please get it right with the Lord today. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of repentance. Today is a day that you make sure you are in right standing with the Lord Almighty. There's no safer place in this earth, on this earth, than in the will of God. Stay in the will of God. And know this, the best decision you will ever make is to keep your life in right standing with God and to give your life, those who don't know God, to give your life over to him. It will be the best decision you'll ever make in your life. Have a great day.